Adventure Time is one of the most iconic and recognizable cartoons to ever air in history. The Cartoon Network original series would go on to become a global phenomenon, changing not only the landscape of Cartoon Network, but also the landscape of modern cartoons. And you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who isn't familiar with this groundbreaking series. But do you know the story of how Adventure Time actually came to be? How it started as a small indie web project would be rejected multiple times and would ultimately end up on the network that would elevate it to the juggernaut out of a franchise that it is today? Well, sit back, grab your popcorn, and get ready. I'm Corin XV, and today we're going to be going over the wild origins of Adventure Time. At an early age, Pendleton Ward was very interested in animation. Inspired by his mom Betty, who was an artist, he'd start drawing flip books as early as the first grade. His mother would also be responsible for introducing him as a kid to Matt Groening, the creator of Futurama and The Simpsons. Oh, and can I just say, if you're meeting the creator of The Simpsons as a kid, you're destined for big things as an animator. Penn's love for animation would carry out throughout his school years as he would first graduate from Northeast School of Arts and later attend Cal Arts. And it was while attending Cal Arts he would make friends with JQ Quintel and Alex Hirsch. And if these names sound familiar, Quintel's the creator of Regular Show, while Hirsch is the creator of Gravity Falls. So safe to say he had a solid group of friends. It was also while at CalArts, Penn would be approached by Eric Holman, the vice president of Federator Studios. He would offer Penn a job after watching one of his films at the annual CalArts animation screenings. In 2005, Penn created a student film titled Barista that was released on channel Federator. He would then continue to make short animations for Federator's random cartoons, which aired on the Nicktoons network. Penn would then go on to create two different shorts that would both become their own series. One about four teenagers saving the universe with their emotions called Bravest Warriors, and one about a boy and his magic dog going on adventures called Adventure Time, with the latter of the half going on to become an internet phenomenon. The original short that aired on Random Cartoons was a really rough version of the Adventure Time that we know today, but looking back at it, there's still all the same charm that we would come to know from this series. The short followed Finn, Jake, alongside Lady Rainicorn as they rescued Princess Bubblegum from the Ice King. Later, Princess! I have to attend to this! Fare thee well, Pin and Jake. Oh yeah, did I say Finn? I meant Pin. But hey, at least Jake still called Jake up in here. The original film would first air on Nicktoons, but after getting permission by the network to upload it elsewhere, Frederator would upload it to YouTube. And once uploaded, the short would gain over a million views in less than a year. This gave Penn and Frederator Studios the confidence to pitch Adventure Time to Nickelodeon as a full-fledged series. And with the success it was having online, it had to be a surefire yes, right? Well, surprisingly, Nickelodeon would turn down the pitch for Adventure Time not once, but multiple times. Fred Cyber, one of the producers of Adventure Time, would write this on his blog about his experience trying to pitch Adventure Time to Nick. The short was done with only a few hiccups. As hands-on animators, the team was a little gun-shy about doing the animation in Korea. We prevailed since it would be great practice for how the TV industry worked. And Penn had accomplished the almost impossible. A cartoon that seemed to be influenced more by early 20th century animations, those spaghetti arms and shape-shifting bodies, than Looney Tunes, a film whose surrealism was tempered by an incredibly sly, at the same time, in-your-face humor. Wow. When Penn's short was done, everyone knew it was something special. Except, it seemed, the powers that be at Nickelodeon. I knew it was going to be a problem. Here was a film that was like nothing else, drawn with a clear, simple, and wholly original design. It was funny beyond the beyond, but was that character in preschool? I'm 12 years old. How much clearer did it need to be? Was the humor for adults or kids? The executives were completely confused. I anticipated their focus groups by pointing out the four reasons they'd come back with a no. They returned with the four, plus one more. Rejected. What was wrong with these people? Nickelodeon had an exclusive option to make a series on Adventure Time, so I went back and back and back and back, five times altogether, to different executives in different divisions. It's not a Nickelodeon show. What the hell does that mean? What it meant, bottom line, is that one, that particular executive team was brain dead, and two, they didn't really want to produce a show with me. There was a feeling I'd been in business with them for too long and had gotten too much from them and that I was the former management team's talent. Nickelodeon was moving on. At that point, I'd had an exclusive producing deal with Nickelodeon for several years because I was also a programming consultant to the network. 
There was a feeling that I knew their secrets, and they didn't want them shared with the competition. This situation usually meant that a rejection of one of our show pitches had no other life. But this time, I kept going back for more pain. Five times Nick said no to Adventure Time. Finally, I'd had enough and told the president to please rip up my exclusive. It had been a good decade in their clutches, but I was done. Any place that couldn't see that AT was a winner wasn't the place to be locked down. Nickelodeon saved a lot of money, and honestly, that management team couldn't care less about me, Penn Ward, or Adventure Time. Oh, and just for the record, when Adventure Time was being pitched to Nick, there was another show alongside of it being pitched at the same time. And this would be the show that Nick would end up picking over Adventure Time. Now you're probably sitting at the edge of your seat wondering, what show could they have possibly picked over Adventure Time? What show did they have so much faith in that Adventure Time wasn't the top option? Well, the show was Fanboy and Chum Chum. I got you, buddy. Is this real life? Huh? Congratulations. You're free to board. So maybe it is a good thing that Nick didn't get Adventure Time. After this, Penn would be hired to work on the first season of Cartoon Network's Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, a show about a young boy named Flapjack raised by a well-named Buppy, who, inspired by the adventurous pirate Captain Knuckles, seeks out adventure to find the mysterious Candied Island. The show aired from 2008 to 2010 and Penn worked as a writer and a storyboard artist. And while working on this show, he would also work alongside his friends J.Q. Quintel and Alex Hirsch. So it's just kind of crazy how all of these shows are connected in a way. But while Penn was working on Flapjack, he never gave up on the idea of Adventure Time being its own series, and neither did Frederator Studios. So when the opportunity came, Frederator approached Cartoon Network with the pitch of Adventure Time being its own series. And believe it or not, even Cartoon Network thought it would be risky to invest into Adventure Time, only agreeing to greenlight the series if Ward could prove that the pilot wasn't a quote-unquote one-hit wonder. Penn and his friends would then start working on storyboards to submit to the network. The first storyboard was an episode revolving around Finn and Princess Bubblegum going on a spaghetti date, which the network wasn't happy with. But the second one was a storyboard for the season 1 episode, The Enchiridion. In this one, Penn was able to emulate the same style of the original Nicktoon short. And because of this, season 1 of Adventure Time would go into production. Season 1 of Adventure Time was greenlit for 26 episodes. And from its debut, every episode was averaging from 2.5 to 3 million views, which was a drastic increase from what Cartoon Network was seeing just a year prior. It's no secret that around this time, Cartoon Network had deviated a lot from its bread and butter of anime animated content, with only a couple animated shows coming out from 2008 to 2010. But with Adventure Time, Cartoon Network had not only got a return on their investment, but got it times 10. Adventure Time had quickly became one of the leading faces of the network, and its success would usher in a new standard of animated shows that many people who were kids during this time referred to as the golden age of Cartoon Network. Shows like Regular Show, The Amazing World of Gumball, Steven Universe, these shows were all making an impact in the cartoon industry, and Adventure Time was in the front lead the charge. After season 1, Adventure Time would continue to get renewed with 26 episodes up until season 5, where it would be its biggest season by far renewed with 52 episodes, the largest out of any season out of the 10. But this would also be the season where Pendleton Ward would actually step down as the showrunner of Adventure Time. He was quoted saying it was affecting his quality of life, while also being quoted saying, I quit because it was driving me nuts. But don't worry, this isn't one of those situations where a creator starts to hate their art as Penn would still be involved with Adventure Time from time to time as he was involved with Adventure Time Distant Lands and Adventure Time Fiona and Kate. He would also help out on other Cartoon Network shows from time to time like Uncle Grandpa and Steven Universe, which if you didn't know the creator of Steven Universe, Rebecca Sugar, also worked on Adventure Time. See, all the shows are connected. And Penn's shoes would be filled by his CalArts classmates Adam Moto, who was basically there at the beginning of Adventure Time. So with Penn gone, Adventure Time never dipped in quality, and some would even argue that the later seasons picked up in quality as Adventure Time would begin to start maturing in its topics. Adventure Time would go on to have 10 seasons and be the longest running Cartoon Network show in history with 283 episodes, just beating out regular show by 22 episodes. Throughout its 10 season run, the show was nominated for 78 awards and won 24. So not bad for a show that got rejected 5 times. To this day, Adventure Time remains a staple of Western animation as in many people's opinions it's not only one of the greatest cartoons of all times but one of the greatest shows of all time. 
To me, Adventure Time is a core component of my childhood, and it's not only one of the reasons why I love animation, but it's also one of the reasons why I have this channel and make the type of videos that I make. My name's CorinXV, and this was the Origins of Adventure Time. If you made it to the end of the video, please hit the like button to push the content out to more amazing people, and make sure to subscribe and hit the noted bell to be notified when I upload my next video. And until then, it's been your boy CorinXV, and I'm off this. Bitch, I'm cheap sauce in this cup. Lama, it can't want no hoes. Bottle, it can't let me pour. High sponge is like a floor. Wanna glow? Let me show you. V long thoughts. I don't need no hoes.